Hey, this is SCV Rush here, giving you guys a build order for Terrence from the UEN.com. Um, today I'm going to be showing you a double racks build aggression, Terrence aggression for uh, on this map, Steps of War. Uh, it's a very simple build order. Oh, in case you guys are wondering, um, <laughs> I am lagging a little bit in the beginning. That's why I'm SCVs idling there. But that's alright. So the build order goes like this. It go, you, uh, you build two barracks before you build a refinery. So you go 9 supply depot. 12 barracks, 15 barracks, and then 16 refinery. Unlike a convention build where you build a refinery before you build anything else, this allows you to open up for much stronger early push, and, uh, and additionally, it allows you to um, tech up pretty fast. Um, because you're spending all your minerals on barracks and not spending any gas uh, for your early push, it allows you to tech fairly fast, so you get the even though you get the refiner at 16 instead of 14, you're not spending any money on tech lab or reapers or marauders. All your money is goes into marines, or all your mineral goes into marine, but gas just gets accumulated so you could tech to something fast. So I'm putting down my barracks here at 12. Um, just scouting him real quick. He's probably doing a 14 hatch, a 14 pull, excuse me. Okay, yeah, he's building his spawning pool right now. Uh, this is a pretty standard Zerg build, 14 pool, Sometimes Zerg players like to go 14 pull, 15 hatch. I think he's going for the uh, early speed lane, possibly. Uh, the Hydra, Hydra loves going for the 14 pull, 15 hatch. It's a very strong power play for mid game. Uh, you can, I think, one man Zerg covers that in his video. That Zerg is harassing me a little bit. It's kind of frustrating if he gets my SCVs. Um, but I'm just trying to micro some of my stuff. Um, uh, I'm building my marine now, so I'm not too worried. Microing my my SCV a little bit, yeah, get this guy off. If 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 at any given point, if the uh, Zerg player or Protoss player harasses your worker while you're building it, you always want to take it off because chances are it will die. You want to bring another worker from here to make it constructing a while, and then you get two SCVs attacking it. And right now he's just building his, uh, he's just finished his extractor, probably going to get his speed upgrade from the spawning pool, the metabolic boost, uh, after, after the 100 gas. So when you look at the income here, I'm getting my orbital command um, fairly quick because that's always the best thing to do. It's better than, pr if you have the choice of producing SCVs or getting the orbital command, always get the orbital command because it's faster it gives you more income over time and it's you know the meal is free I think I was sl supply lock for a little bit you always want to build the supply depot at 17 so the by the time you build SCVs and barrack uh, and Marines you can your your supply depot finishes you can keep getting getting people so he puts out expansion around 22 and th this is a pretty standard Zerg player. Although this map is actually kind of small because you know my ramp goes directly into his ramp and goes into his base. So I'm not sure if this is such a safe play, but he does have Zerglings. Zerglings is such a great early map control unit. He's probably getting his speeding. Yeah, he's getting his speed upgrade metabolic boost, and that really puts the Terran on the defensive position. So right now I'm about to push out with six Marines. Six Marines is the optimum number, or eight Marines. I like to bring a couple SCV. I mean, my name is. SCV rush. SCV is an integral part of my strategy and my success as a Terran player. So SCV is a great meat shield, right? Uh, it's it does a pitiful damage of five for the fusion cutter, but it allows me to do more damage with my marines. Now analyze that in a little bit here. Now right now he's he uh, my SCV is just engaging, you know, putting up some you know shield for my marines. And I'm just pulling my, my, my marines back, microing, because he doesn't have the speed. Oh, he just got his uh, metabolic boost. If he doesn't have his metabolic boost, you could just micro marine a little better, and you could out, um, out micro him in that regard. So right now I have a, quite a few marines. I have eight marines. There's really not much he can do, and I'm just taking down his hatchery. And you can see that this really puts a lot of pressure on the Zerg. He just finished his hatchery, and really, he did, even he put the spine crawler down, there's really not much he can do. The reason why I... Okay, well, there's a battle coming on right now. Um, yeah, he's not going to be able to stop me right now as of this point. And right now you can see that I already finished my factory. I'm building my Helions. I could get a tech lab and get tanks depending on what he gets. If he gets roaches, I get tanks. If he gets zerglings, I get Helions. Oh, see, my Helions is already here. It's wonderful. Helions are wonderful against zerglings. So what I was going to say earlier is that if 
if the Zerg player gets a lot of Zerglings, that means he's not building any drones for his larva. So bringing my SCVs in to the attack makes him forces him to get more Zerglings. And in return, if he doesn't get any drones and get Zerglings, well, you know, we're still even in terms of SCV count. Right now, you can see that my SCV count is way greater than his because I could produce unit and SCV at the same time, whereas the Zerg is either forced to get one or the other. He could either get drones or he could get uh, Zerglings. So I think he's getting a couple of drones here after he realized that uh, I'm not be able to stop stop the push right now. But I do have three healings. That's really, really strong. Right now, you always want to hit those Zerglings while they're you know in a line because the, the clone attack of healing is just is so powerful if Zerglings are in line, but not so powerful if they can get a surround on you. He's putting his spine crawler, but I think this is not a very good position. I would probably put it around here um, or right here. But really, the Zerg, it puts a lot of pressure on the Zerg, and there's really not much the Zerg player can do. And you can see at my base, I'm building my Helions, and I'm building my, okay, I'm building my tech lab for my starport. I can get Banshees really fast. So I'm putting so much pressure on the Zerg player, and I'm taking so fast, because I'm not spinning. You see, all of these units doesn't require any gas. And that's the best part of the strategy, because I'm committing my gas into higher tech, while I'm still doing considerable amount of damage to the Zerg. I'm fail micro by, by SCV right here, you know. You know, you can't do everything. I think this game was, I'm still a platinum player, I think, in this game, uh, moving up the ranks. It actually takes quite a bit of, quite a few games before you can actually move into diamond. I think Hawks is a diamond player, I am not sure. Um, but you guys can check what their stats are. And then, um, I'm just building my Banshee, getting pumping out of all my, uh, all my production unit and getting SCV at the same time. So you can see that I'm just pulling away in the SCV count here. And there's really not much he can do because he's so forced to get so many so many zerglings just to stop me i think it's a better choice that he gets roaches but if he gets roaches at the same time i'm so far attack ahead in tech i'm gonna be getting banshees and then i'm gonna harass his drones so it's very difficult for a zerg player to stop something like this if he's not prepared for it you know if he gets a couple a lot of zerglings and not expand then yeah he could stop this push really well so what, what is he okay he just finished teching he's getting his oh his spire is almost finished yeah but at this point, you know, I already pull, pull out, pull out, like pulled away so far in the economy that there's really not much Zerg player. Even if he defeats my forces, I have such a huge economic difference in income. Look at that: 780, 200 gas to 520, 100 gas. And I already put down my go expansion. I didn't really want to expand here because he has an overlord there. That you know, you'd always want to be sneaky about where you want to put expansion. Oh, broodlings are very powerful. <laughs> Took down my marine, and then they blow up. That's the end of those broodlings. And we can see, that, okay, he's building, he's finished his spire, he's building his mule list, he, he barely has income, 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 I just said income, I sound like a Russian. Uh, he's building a couple of mule lists, he barely can afford them actually. So at this point, I'm deciding whether I want to push his base or build up my economy. I don't actually, I don't think I actually scout the mule list. But at this point, you know, the game is pretty much over. Even if he has four mule lists, and if I scout it, do I scout it? I don't scout it. I have not built my engineering bay. But, you know, I've already done considerable amount of damage to his drones, even if I don't take down his, you know, four mules. So, the idea of this build is to build 9 supply, 12 barracks, 15 barracks, and then 16 refinery, 17 supply depot. Um, the key is to build the 2 barracks before the refinery and allow 3 SV to gather the gas, meanwhile you're getting marines. And once you get to 100 gas, you build a factory. And then, depends on the situation, you could get siege tanks, or you could get banshees. Depends on the situation. If the, if the opponent gets mule then you might want to get some uh, vikings or banshees. If the opponent's getting a lot of roaches, then you might want to get siege tanks and push out afterwards. I just, I'm just building my turrets because those mule are going to kill me if I don't do that. Um, and then, uh, you want to push out with about 6 to 8 marines and like 2-3 SCVs. Think about the SCV as a meat shield. You really need that marine. Uh, you really need the SCVs to actually hold the opponent's zerglings back while you do damage with your uh, with your marines. And marines are really good da damage dealers. They do about seven DPS per second to all ground units. That's really powerful, I think, uh, for how much they cost. But they they're also very fragile. That's why you bring a couple of SCVs. I always like to use SCVs as integral part of my strategy because they are by far one of the int most interesting workers. CV is definitely is the coolest. That's why one of the reasons why I play Terran. 
So yeah, that sums it up, guys. Um, if you guys have want to see any additional build orders, you can visit the uen.com, the form. You can check it out. You can leave a comment below. Uh, what you guys think about the strategy? What type of strategy you guys want to see next? I'm willing to do them. I'm a Terran player, a one man Zerg Zerg player, and we're recruiting a Protoss player. All right, thanks for listening. This is SCV Rush signing out.